in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you and good morning and welcome on this first Sunday of Lent, which seems very appropriate as a penitential and suffering season, as we also today commemorate a year ago when the war in Donbass exploded into a full-scale invasion of Ukraine. And so we hold our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, both here and in many places in the world, but especially in the country itself, in our hearts, as we worship God this morning. It is a delight to have many members of our local Ukrainian community here with us this morning and also representatives of our civic authorities, our mayor, our deputy lieutenant and the CEO designate of SIGCUP Partners. You should have a copy of this order of service and you should also have within reach a green hymn book. Between those two documents, you should have everything you need for the service. These are also available in Ukrainian if anyone would like or if anyone's standing next to somebody who you think would find it helpful to have it in Ukrainian, they are available. And we're going to start our service this morning by singing our opening hymn, a hymn that perhaps reminds us of something that's going on in Ukraine now. It's hymn number 351, He Who Would Valiant Be. Neil as Reverend Eucaria leads us in our prayers of penitence as we start our worship here this morning. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty oh, God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. 
Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Because we are in Lent, we do not sing the glory of this week. So let us pray the collect for the first Sunday of Lent. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit, and as you know our weakness, so may we know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And a collect for Ukraine. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. For all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort will draw near to them. For those world leaders with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you will hold and protect them in the name of Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So we come to our first Bible reading and I am delighted to invite Nadia to come and read for us some words from Psalm 25. See for the price of one. A reading from the book of Psalms, Psalms 25, verses 1 to 9. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you to be put to shame. Let them be let them be ashamed who, who are we want chariots. Make me to know your ways, O oh Lord. Teach, teach me your paths. Lead, <coughs> lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O oh Lord, and of your steadfast love. <coughs> For they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For the sake of your goodness, O oh Lord. One second. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and treats the humble his way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thank you, Nadia, and with help and with some distraction as well. It is wonderful to have the whole family here in church with us. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And now we come to our gradual hymn. 
Uh, the word gradual comes from Latin for steps, because during this hymn, the gospel reading is brought to the steps of the church before being read. Let us stand and sing together hymn number 72 in the Green Hymn Book, 40 Days and 40 Nights. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that, come, that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on a pinnacle of temple, saying to him, if you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your feet against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to test. Again, the devil took him, to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All this I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him. And suddenly, angels came and waited on him. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to him, O Lord. Lord, may you speak through us this morning, and may we all hear in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please do sit down. Some of you and those who receive my weekly email will have been expecting to see Katrina Hembalska here this morning. Um, she spoke very movingly at our Ukraine vigil on Friday evening, but unfortunately, as of last night, she had a high temperature and no voice. So very sadly, she is unable to be with us this morning, and we do pray for her and for a quick recovery. However, she did speak on Friday, and I did have the privilege of hearing her then, and so I am able to recount some of what she said so movingly. She started by giving us two lines to think about. She said, it has been a year but my hands are shaking as on that first day. We have got older by a year, but our hearts have aged by a hundred. And her story is one of her stepbrother, who has been on the front line since March of last year. His wife and children live one day at a time, waiting for the message each day, I'm okay, I'm still alive. He hasn't had a break for many months. In war, all those rules about every so often you must go on R&R &R go out of the window a bit although she did share that for the first time in all that time, he is getting a short break at the moment. She also shared two other stories, but before I offer those to you this morning, Lesia, who has kindly agreed to come and share her story, she didn't know when she arrived this morning that she was going to do this, so thank you. If you'd like to stand here, and speak into this microphone. Good morning, everyone. Uh, since war has started, we have many sad stories in Ukraine. We have many deaths, especially guys who are fighting for our freedom. They're fighting for not only our freedom, they're fighting for all Europe. And sadly, I have a friend who was in the east of Ukraine since war has started, and he died just two months ago. We got the sad news from his wife and his children. It's very sad because young people dying, and we have to stop this. Thank you so much for everyone who's sitting here today for your continuous support to us. I know many of you, I know Sue personally, who has started this. And we are so touched with your help. Thank you, people. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lesia. I know that wasn't easy for you. But as I said to you earlier, these are stories that we need to hear. These are stories that need to be told. Perhaps, well, a different story. On Friday, Katrina told her the story of a friend of hers called Anna, who married her love called Victor, and they settled happily in Dnipro. They have three little girls, and their dream is to own a flat and they saved 
And they said no to their children. No, you can't have this today. No, we can't go out today. And they got together the money and they bought their flat in Dnipro. And they started to think, you know what, now we can live our life. And then war broke out. And war came there. And they have had to leave their beautiful flat. And they don't know whether or not it's still intact. They are here in this country safe. So in that sense, it's a good news story. But every day they are waiting. Can we go home? Can we go back to our life? Can we go somewhere where we're understood in our language? The day the war is over, they'll be on the first plane. And then we heard in Ukrainian from Marina. She's been in this country for eight months. It was a very hard decision for her to come. She has three daughters, and she came with them to protect them, but of course her husband can't come. And every day she waits for that phone call. Every day she wishes to know that he's okay. Her husband's cousin was also out fighting on the front line. And he was phoning daily and she phoned him on the day when he was in the trench, but he didn't pick up. And two months ago, he lost his life defending Ukraine. The very day she messaged him to check was the day that he was shot. So many families will never hear from their son or father or husband or boyfriend again. And that is war. And that is why we pray for an end to war. In our gospel reading, which we start Lent with, and we do every year, Jesus is there in the wilderness. He is in hard times. And his temptations are the same as ours. The temptation to listen to the siren voices that are not of God. And we can see in Ukraine and in so many places in this world what happens when people listen to the voices that are not of God. But we dare to pray, we dare to hope for a better future. We work towards a better future. It is our job as Christians and as human beings to do all we can. A future without hatred. A future where the truth is told. Where peace that comes is just and stable. And we see a free and secure Ukraine and many other countries too. We pray for the start of healing. It seems a long way off. But we must decline the siren voices that would encourage us to hatred. And we must work for peace. We must pray for peace. And we must never lose hope. Because the story and journey of Lent is hard. But at the end, Beyond death, we know resurrection. And we know and we hold as Christians that war and death and destruction and all the awfulness in this world, they won't win in the end because they are of evil. And evil does not win in the end. Let us know that. Let us work for that. Let us know heaven on earth as we will pray soon in our Lord's Prayer. Amen.
And so, as we resolve to work and pray and hope, let us stand and together declare our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page three in your order of service, in whichever language is most comfortable for you. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now please would you sit or kneel as Liz and Katie lead us in our intercessions, which are our prayers for each other and for the world. And part of the intercessions today will be sung. Beauty for brokenness, hope for despair. Lord, in the suffering, this is our prayer. Bread for the children, justice, joy, peace. Sunrise to sunset, your kingdom increase. God of the poor, friends of the weak, give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts, let tears fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. In these prayers, I would normally say, Lord, in your mercy, and would request that you reply, hear our prayer. In your service sheet, you should have a slip of paper <coughs> saying, hear our prayer, and followed by, the Ukrainian for hear our prayer. As a reminder that we are one church with our Ukrainian friends, Today I will say in these prayers of intercession, Lord in your mercy in Ukrainian, Hospiti svoi molosti. I invite you all to reply in English, hear our prayer, or if you feel comfortable to do so, in Ukrainian, pochoi nashu molitvo. As we mark a year since Russia escalated its war in Ukraine, bringing in its wake deep sorrow and pain. Let us pray to our Sovereign Lord. Dear Lord, we pray for peace in Ukraine and across your world. May guns fall silent. May those scattered to foreign lands be safe to return to their homes. 
May homes lost be rebuilt. And may fields once again be full of grain. Hospedis voi molusti, pochoi menashuma litvo. We pray for all who lead, whether in church or the secular world, that each step they take may reflect a focus on the welfare of their fellow man, remembering at all times the call of our Saviour to love one another. Hospedis voi molusti, pochoi nashu malitvo. Thinking of those impacted by conflict or natural disaster, we pray for all those suffering from fear of hunger or fear of cold, whether here or abroad. May the Lord protect them. Hospedis voi malosti, pochoi nashu malitvo. We pray for all those who are facing pain or weakness at this time, diminished by the mental or physical trials of life. We pray for those injured through conflict or as a result of the recent earthquake in Turkey and Syria. And we pray for those on our prayer list in church, in particular those recently added, Adam Bowley, Ryan and Daniel Chandler, Sasha and Katerina Hemberska, Dan and Jean Lake, Douglas Blake, and Linda Waitwright, Waitman. Hospedi isavoi molosti, pochoi nashu malitvo. You, Lord, are the giver of life eternal. We remember before you the faithful departed. In particular, we remember those who have lost their lives in war. We remember those killed by the recent earthquake in Turkey and Syria. We remember baby Ophelia, Doris and Joan Lawford recently departed. And we remember Canon Stanley Allen, whose anniversary of death falls at this time. We ask your blessing upon loved ones and friends who are at rest with you. May they rejoice in the fellowship of the saints and the fullness of life eternal. Mulisoredni Otietz, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Refuge from cruel wars, havens from fear, cities for sanctuary, freedoms to share, peace to the killing fields, scorch earth to green, Christ for the bitterness, his cross for the pain. God of the Give us compassion, we pray. Melt our cold hearts that tis fall like rain. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. Amen. Thank you, Katie, and thank you, Lee. Come change our love from a spark to a flame. Please, would you stand as we are going to exchange the peace. We wish each other peace in Christ's name shortly. When we finished doing so, we will sing our offertory hymn, which is hymn number 305, Love Divine, All Love's Excelling, as we pray for love 
for there to be an outpouring of love on this world, in this world, and especially in Ukraine. But first, the risen Christ came and stood among his disciples who thought he was dead. And he said to them, peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer to one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your son, born of the Blessed Virgin Mary, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. Mm. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. And so he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 
holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of St. John the Evangelist and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As Jesus himself taught us, we sit or kneel to pray in whatever language we feel most comfortable. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. All are welcome to share Holy Communion here at the Lord's table. It is Jesus who invites you, not just me. So please do come forward. And if it is not your practice to receive communion, but you would prefer a blessing, please just let us know when you get here. We have gluten-free bread available. Again, please just let us know when you get here. You will have noticed that the consecrated wine has remained covered throughout. If you would like your bread to be dipped in the wine as you come forward, please just nod. But please also remember that if God is present 
in all of it. He is present in each and every part. And therefore, by receiving just the bread, you are still receiving the whole of communion, as I will shortly do. Prayers for healing will be available in the Lady Chapel through there up the slope. When you've come forward, if you would like to receive prayers for yourself or for a loved one or for anything in particular, please do go in that direction where there will be two people waiting to pray with you. The body of Christ. body and blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. body and blood of Christ. The 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 body and blood of Christ. body and blood of Christ. The body and blood of Christ. May the Lord bless you as you hear in his name. Amen. The body of Christ. May the Lord bless you as you hear in his name. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord God, you have renewed us with the living bread from heaven. By it you nourish our faith, increase our hope and strengthen our love. Teach us always to hunger for him who is the true and living bread and enable us to live by every word that proceeds from out of your mouth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty, Almighty God, God we, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. One or two notices before we finish this morning's service. Um, thank you to everyone who has been here and who has taken part, and especially to our friends from Ukraine, um, to Nadia and Lesia, who were brave enough to come forward and join us here at the front. Thank you. And I know we have special refreshments after the service, so I hope that you will all be able to stay and join us for coffee, tea, hot chocolate, sandwiches, and all sorts of other things um, when we finish shortly. Next week, next Sunday, sees a complete change of pace. We have done a month in February of inclusion, and we have culminated this week in remembering Ukraine. Next week, perhaps especially for those with children,
we have a pet service. So any of you who would like to bring your pets here for a blessing, it will be a full service, but it will involve bringing your pets forward for blessings as well. I am the owner of two cats. They are probably the one animal that's actually quite difficult to bring. Not all dogs, of course, are completely well behaved either, but if you're confident, do please bring them. We, we've got a big building, there's plenty of room. We'd love to meet your pets. If you feel that you can't, and we really don't want to stress any animal, please bring a photograph which is what I will be doing, and we will bless the photograph and your pet through that. So it's a complete sort of change of pace next week. Um, next week, just to let you know my postponed retreat from three weeks ago, um, I'm, I'm away from tomorrow until Thursday. Um, but Reverend Eucaria will be available if anyone needs a priest. Um, and... Our bell ringers um, and Debbie, our tower captain, have asked me to let you know how very pleased they are with the number of volunteers that have come forward to ring for the king on the coronation weekend. Um, and I've forgotten the exact date, but it's, it's May, isn't it? Sorry? The 6th. Um, well, so um, they, they will be ringing out, and the idea is that new ringers can join them. So I'm sure Debbie... Um, and her team will be recruiting this morning. If anyone, she's waving at the back there, if anyone would like to have a go on that Saturday, I'm sure it will be a great occasion. We'll, we'll put the bell tower on the screen so you can see what's going on, and I'm sure there'll be refreshments involved as well as we ring for the king on at that weekend. So things coming up. Um, we are on the third week of our new AV system, so thank you. Sorry for the occasional lapses in microphone. We are getting to grips with it. And do have a look and chat to the guys on the, uh, on the desk at the back there. It's quite complex. But if you watch a, uh, the live stream on Facebook or on YouTube, you'll see how much better the quality is. So thank you to everyone who contributed and was part of that. We are, of course, at the beginning of Lent. So during Lent, churches together in Sidcup get together for a series of Lent lunches every Wednesday. Um, the first one is next week. This year, they're all being held at Christchurch Sidcup. Um, on the 15th of March, so th three Wednesdays in, um, although we'll be there, it will be hosted by our brothers and sisters at All Saints um, and um, some volunteers here from St. John's and Eucaria, Reverend Eucaria, will be doing the short talk for our Lent lunch. So if you can only go one week, go that week, but every Wednesday, and they're collecting uh, donations. You get soup and sandwich, donations for Christian aid, towards Christian aid, um, who are at work in Ukraine, among other places. Um, have I forgotten any notices? Yeah, okay, but, um, okay. Um, uh, 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 sorry? The th oh, the, on this Friday, 3rd of March, there's a day of prayer, and please see Margaret, who's there in a blue jacket and a yellow scarf. Mar Margaret, wave your... Um, and it's at Emmanuel Church. So that's churches together in Sidcup as well. Thank you, Margaret, for that reminder. Um, you will have noticed the map of Ukraine as you came in. You will see the candles placed on that map. We, some of those were the candles that were placed at our prayer vigil on Friday evening. If you haven't had a chance to place a candle, please do so after the service. And over here in the memorial chapel is a book of remembrance that I think has been in the custody of Barry and the Royal British Legion. It's the first page starts on 1933. Do have a look. There is a special page added today in remembrance of Ukraine, and it's there on the altar in the memorial chapel. And finally, again on a completely different note, we do have one birthday today at least. Iris had a birthday yesterday. 
Uh, Len has a birthday next week. Um, who else has it? I have a feeling someone else has a birthday the same day as you, Len. Who, who's that? Any other birthdays coming up? Lesia, when's your birthday? First of March. Okay, so Lesia, Len, and Iris. Any other birthdays in the house? We're going to sing "Happy Birthday" to all those people who have a birthday coming up. Looking over there? No, there's some smiling going on. Mark, please, could you, sir? Happy birthday. <laughs> to Lesia to Len and to Iris. So both church wardens in one go, <laughs> and both standing there with their sticks. <laughs> how, how lovely. Um, and now we come to our final hymn, which is hymn number 142, 142. Something that's very close to all our hearts at the moment. We pray in this hymn for guidance. Guide me, O thou great Redeemer. And now I invite you to remain standing as we hear the Ukrainian national anthem played.
For any who don't know, the first lines of the chorus are souls and bodies we lay down all for our freedom. So let us now bow our heads and pray for God's blessing upon us and among us. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and everyone you love, living and departed, now and forevermore. Amen. Love and serve the Lord. In the, In the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.